Hi everybody, so I am finally ready to record our first video. Um, I think I have the camera set up on a good angle so that you guys can see everything and I'm known for talking too much so I'm going to try not to do that and jump right into it because I know a lot of you guys have been really excited looking forward to this. So here we go. So we're going to start by making a slip knot. Um, if you didn't get a chance to look at that video that I posted and you can't figure it out there is a video that I've already put up um that explains how to make a slip knot so you can go back and look at that and it does it I do it several times in like slow motion so you can really see what's going on so um for the sake of time for this one in order to make a slip knot you have this is called um the end of the yarn and then the working yarn is the yarn that's attached to the ball so all you do is cross it over like that so you have the tail behind it okay so now you have a loop just like that so again the working yarn which is the one attached to the balls in the front the loop does not need to be that big so something something about like that so you're going to hold it with your fingers again working yarn in the front put your pointer and your thumb in grab the working yarn pull it up you should have something that looks just like that put your crochet hook into the uh, loop that you just pulled up and then grab both ends oh I'm sorry nope I messed it up and pull I'll do that one I don't know what happened the first time but you Pull it over like, or I'm sorry, make a loop like that. Grab this with your pointer and your thumb. Insert your hook. Grab both ends and pull. There's your slip knot. The slip knot never counts as your first chain. Just in case anybody was wondering that. So the directions for our washcloth say that you're going to chain 25. It is incredibly, extremely important, especially if you're just starting off and you're a beginner, that you count every single one of your stitches. I know it can be tedious. Um, you can download the row counter that I have um, linked in our group, which you can record your rows that way. Um, but the best way to not lose track of what you're doing is to count out loud. So in order to chain, we have our hook in the slip knot. This is how you start any project where you're working in rows. If you're working in the round, that's a different story, but we'll get there in a different video. So as the instructions say, you're going to chain 25. So you take your hook. I'm using a five, uh, just double check. Yes, a five millimeter um, crochet hook. So what you're going to do is grab the yarn with your hook and pull a chain through that's one right there I'm gonna do it again so you guys can see it two three four five I'm going to stop at five just for one second you want to try to make sure that your tension stays relatively the same you don't like you don't want to um don't crochet super tight because then it can be really hard to work into the stitches that you've already made but also don't have it like where you're doing something like that either you want to try to keep the tension the same as much as you can throughout um as long as it's relatively close you shouldn't notice too much of a difference at the end so um i'm just gonna go ahead and chain so we have five and we need 25 so Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. And if anybody's wondering um, the way that I'm holding the yarn, it the, I, even for me, this took practice. So I, I wrap it like this. One, two. 
So that way, as I'm working, it's, if you see, it's pulling the yarn slowly so that I don't have to constantly grab from the, the ball of yarn. So there's our 25 original stitches. Now for row, so, and um, I can't use my row counter because it's on my phone. So what I did is I wrote down the pattern and um, this, the way that this was worded in the, in this particular pattern has the chain 25 listed as row one. Normally, based on my experience, it won't say that. Um, it'll say like chain however many, and then it'll start with row one. But because the instructions here say that this is row one, I'm just going to mark a little, I'm going to do tally marks because again, my row counter is on my phone. I'm using my phone to record. Um, so that's my row one. So on to row two. And again, um, if you're having trouble making the chain, just go back, watch what I did, slow down, take your time until you get something that looks like this. And then you should be good to go. If you need, I've said this before, if you need any, um, extra help or one-on-one -on -one or anything like that, please do not hesitate to send me a private message reach out in our group chat, post on the page. I will do whatever it takes to make sure that you guys understand it. Um, the chaining is like the easiest part. My, I taught my daughter, I think, when she was six. And um, she got the hang of it. She got frustrated for a little bit, but she got the hang of it eventually. And then she was actually able to make her first washcloth um, probably within two or three days of me sitting her down. So... Anyway, on to row two, um, the directions say to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each of the remaining chains. So, when it says second chain from the hook, again, the this loop that the hook is in, that does not count. Second chain from the hook means not this one, but this one. I just want to make sure you guys can see it. So the second chain from the hook, that does not count the one that your hook is in. It's, this is the first chain from the hook. This is the second chain from the hook. So you're going to go into it just like that. You should have one, uh, I guess bump, we'll call it, on the top of the hook. You're going to grab the yarn just like you would when you were making a chain and pull it through. Now you have two loops on your hook. Grab the yarn again, pull it through both loops on the hook, and that is a single crochet. That's it right there. So again, and then the again, the direction. So that was one single crochet, and we want to um, single crochet in all of these so that we have 24. So again, the counting is important. So if you look closely, you can see we already went into this one. Now we're going to go into the next one right here. You put the hook in, you grab the yarn and pull it through two loops on the hook, grab the yarn, pull it through both hooks. That's our second single crochet. Three, four, and if you get what looks like a big hole right there, it doesn't matter. I promise it'll even itself out. Five, I'm going to do the sixth one slowly again, and then I'm just going to finish up this row. So again, you go in, you grab the yarn, you pull it through, there's two loops. You grab the yarn again, pull it through both loops. That is six single crochets. Now, real quick, I just want to show you guys, if you should happen to lose count, the little Vs in the top of the single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's how you can count your stitches and you'll be able to tell how many you've already done. So again, I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. So seven, eight, 
9. Now we're at 10. 11. 12. 13. 14. 15. 16. 17. One second. We're at 17. I'm working with this wonky ball of yarn and I have to, I couldn't find the center. So I'm working from the outside of it. 18. <clears throat> 19. Ooh, see, if you slip out, that's okay. 20. 21, 22, 23, and this is your last chain right here. Twenty-four. And now we have successfully completed row number two. Now if you notice, the yarn is kind of curling a little bit down here. It will straighten out. It just has a tendency to do that, especially if you are a tight crocheter like I am. I don't crochet super tight, but I do like to avoid, like, noticeable holes and stuff like that. Also, I have two cats. That's why you're probably noticing me picking off some cat hair. So, again, I'm going to mark. Now we've done row two. And for row three, okay, now this is the part where um, a lot of beginners, myself included, trust me, when I first started out, I don't know what it is. I, I honestly think it's us overthinking things. Um, and I, at least for me anyway, I kind of got overconfident and um, started to think like, oh, I got this. I don't really need to count. You need to count, especially if you are a beginner. Now, what you can do um, if you want to make sure that you don't lose any stitches is take a stitch marker. Now, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to move the camera like that. Um, give me one second. I have a crochet bag right here with all my stuff in it. So these are the stitch markers that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I have. Um, they're pink, blue, and white. It, well, since I'm using the white yarn, I'm not going to use, um, a white stitch marker. But what you can do, if you have these, it can be, it doesn't even have to be these actual technical stitch markers. You can use a safety pin. You can take, let's say, a darker colored piece of yarn and stick it through right here. And this is optional. You do not have to do this, especially if you're going to be counting out loud. But mark your first stitch. And, well, I guess, yeah, that would be the first stitch of um, row two. And then the last stitch that we did, which is right here. So you just... When you when you mark a stitch, you want to go through those top two loops like I showed you guys earlier. <clears throat> so then row three, we're going to chain one. So remember, again, here's the pattern in case. Oh, it looks like it's reading backwards for you guys because of the camera. Okay, so you guys have the pattern. In for row three, it says to chain one. So go back to the beginning and remember... Um, when we were just making regular chains. So you're going to, before you do any more single crochets and before you turn, you're going to chain one. So just again, just like we did in the beginning, grab the yarn, pull through one chain, and then turn. Now again, this is where a lot of people drop stitches. A lot of people, again, myself included, when I was a beginner, used to skip this stitch. This is why I recommend putting stitch markers into the first and last, last 
stitches of each of your rows because it can be really easy to um, drop them, basically. So, um, you the cool thing with these stitch markers is that you can work into them even with the stitch markers in there. So, I chained one. Sorry, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. I chained one. When we had it facing like that, it says chain one, turn. So, I'm going to turn so that I'm working in this direction, okay? And single crochet in each single crochet across for a total of 24. Now, again, you, it's super important that you make sure that in every single row you are counting 24 and also going into all of the previous single crochets. So, I'm going to remove this stitch marker. You guys can see where it's at. I chained one. I'm going to single crochet into that, the one with the stitch marker in it. So that's one. Now, since we're working on the back, this is the back side of our washcloth. It is going to look a little bit different. So I'm going to try my best to show you guys. Again, you want to go into the little Vs. Now, if you, you have to turn it a little bit to be able to see the Vs. So if it makes it easier for you, um, you can look at it that way. You don't want to go into anything down here. So you're going to go, we just did one. You go through those two. Grab the yarn, pull it through. Grab the yarn, pull through both. That's two single crochets three four five six seven one second, sorry. Got to get some more yarn unraveled. So we're at seven. Eight. And don't worry about your speed if you're a beginner. Nine. Ten. The speed will come in time. Um, but if you're, uh, if you're just starting out, you really want to focus on your confidence. So we're at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, Hold on, I got cat hair. Sorry. 16. I think 16. See, I even me. Okay, so again, you go back to the beginning and you look at your V's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I was right. But again, can't hurt to double check if you forget. 17. 18. 19. 20. I should have just unraveled this yarn. We're at 20. Twenty twenty one. See, even I occasionally will miss and have to go back and fix it. Twenty two. Twenty three. And again, the ends are usually where people that are beginners will mess up. So we have twenty three. We need to make sure that we have 24 single crochets at the end. So whether you're using the stitch markers or not, this can look tricky. So we already know that I need to single crochet in this one. I'm going to remove the stitch marker. 
So you just go into, same thing that you just did the entire row. You go into the V. Pull the yarn through. Grab it again. Pull it through both. And now you are at 24 single crochets. So you should have something that looks like this at this point in time. If you're looking at it from the other side, believe it or not, there is a right side and a wrong side when it comes to crochet. The way that you know that you're looking at the right side when it comes to working in rows is that your tail is on the left. That tail end of your yarn that you used to make the slip, slip knot, if it's on the left, this is the right side. If you look closely, you'll notice that this is a little bit neater looking than if we flip it over. That's the wrong side. The wrong side when you're working in rows is if the, the tail is on your right hand side. So that was row number three. I'm just going to mark that down here. Now again, it's for me and you, you technically can turn and then chain one, but I, I personally like to chain one and then turn. Now again, I did not put a stitch marker in, but this is the the very last stitch that we did in the last round. I'm sorry, row. So one, you got to make sure that you don't miss that one. And if you count and you're getting 24 and this final V is the last one that you go into, you should be okay. If you want to use the stitch markers or a piece of yarn in the first and last stitch of each row and move them up as you go, you can, if that makes you feel like more confident um, or like you're less likely to lose a stitch or anything like that. So um, we're now on row four and the directions for row four say to repeat row three. And I'm sorry, that's for rows four through 25. So all you're doing is when you finish a row, chain one, turn, and single crochet 24 times across until this is two. You have a total of 25 rows. So I'm going to do this this last row, this fourth row on camera. One, two, three, four, sorry, five, six, seven, eight, nine, this little uh, piece of whatever you can just, there you go, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, <clears throat> 15, oopsie, it slipped out, that's okay, you just put it back on the hook, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, Lost count. It, I told you guys it's really easy to do that. 16. Cat hair. I'm so sorry. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21, 22, 23, and 24. That's our fourth row. So I'm going to mark four. And then since I'm doing little tally marks, I would do one through when I have five. And again, we're going to do a total of 25 rows, doing the exact same thing that we've been doing. So, um, I, I apologize again for the cat hair. Most of my yarn 
all of my yarn, actually, except for this one and one other one, are put away in bins to avoid getting anything like cat hair on them. Um, but this is the one that I use for demonstrations and tutorials and things like that. So um, that's why there's hair all over it, and I apologize. Um, so yeah, so now that I've done that, you guys should be okay to um, finish rows 5 through 25 on your own. Um, you will see as it starts to come together that the sides will, like this little kind of jaggedy thing, um, that is normal. And you'll notice when you finish that each side will have like a unique look to it. Um, when I record the next video that shows you guys how to fasten off and weave in the ends, um, I'll go over that. But again, as long as you are 100% sure that you're going into in every single row. So I, I'll just, one more time, you're going to, again, chain one. Don't forget to chain one before you start your next row. Always go into this one and this last one right here. Count out loud. Make sure you have 24 stitches in every single row. Um, make sure that you're going into every single one of them and you should be good. And at the end, you should have a perfectly square washcloth. Um, this is not that big. But again, we're kind of just doing it as a beginner type thing. If you want to use it, you absolutely can. You don't have to. If you want to uh, take it apart at the end and save the yarn for something else, that's totally fine too. But it's you can't really proceed with learning crochet until at the bare minimum you've learned how to chain and single crochet because those two stitches are essential. Um, as far as I'm concerned, to being able to learn the rest of them. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to cut the, the video off here. Um, you guys go ahead, and if you need to rewind the video, um, go ahead and work up your washcloths. When you get to um, the 25th row, so, okay, when you get when you get to the end, I will say this. Let's say that this is your 25th row. You're not going to chain one when you're done. You're going to put the last single crochet into the last single crochet of the previous round. And then what I want you to do when you, again, wait until you're on the 25th row. You're not going to chain one. You're not going to turn. You do your very last stitch in the 25th row. You are going to do this. Pull up on the yarn. With your hook, take the hook out, and as long as you have a pretty decent sized loop attached to the yarn right here, stop, leave it attached to the skein of yarn that you're using, and I will film another video that shows what you do when you get to this point. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you guys have fun working on this. Again, if you run into any problems, please do not hesitate to send me a message. Reach out to me in whatever manner that you need to. Um, the sooner that everybody feels comfortable with this project and these stitches, the sooner we can move on to something else. So... Um, Again, I apologize for the delay. I was waiting for this phone holder to come in. I got it. Uh, Amazon delivered it, I think, around 5 or 6 last night. So, um, people are home. I, I have people home from work and school at that time. My house is kind of loud. And I wanted to do this during the day when it was quiet. And everybody could hear um, exactly what I was saying. And get an overview of exactly what it is that you need to do. So again, I really hope that you guys have fun. Thank you all so, so, so much for joining this group. I've really been wanting to do something like this really forever. Um, I am self-taught through, well, my grandmother taught me when I was a kid. She taught me um, chaining, single crochet, even some more advanced stitches, but I never really got into it until I was older, and unfortunately, she had passed by the time that I really dove into it, and I was self-taught 
um, through a variety of different cro uh, crochet videos on YouTube. That can be daunting, especially when it's not the same person going over everything with you. And that's why I wanted to start this. Um, I am going to link the pattern in the description of this video. I'm just going to put my stitch markers away. Um, I will put links to crochet hooks and um, the... Some people call call them darning needles or sewing needles that you, that you'll need. I'll try to link everything in case anybody's missing anything. Um, I'll put a link to the pattern in case you guys want to save it. There, I got it off of a free website, so we are allowed to use it for these purposes. Um, I'll link that, and that's pretty much it. And then um, once everybody has worked up their washcloths, and uh, do me a favor, post pictures. Um, once you're, this is my cat, Charlotte, one of two, <laughs> um, one of two cats. I have another one named Smokey. Post pictures of your washcloths once you're done, um, so that everybody can see everybody else's progress. And then, nope, she's trying to take my yarn. And then I will do, um, the follow-up video most likely today on Charlotte. Sorry, cats love yarn. Try and keep it away from pets. Um, that shows you how to fasten off and weave in the ends because weaving in the ends is incredibly important so that you make sure that your projects don't come unraveled or fall apart once you've completed them. So thank you guys again so much for everything. I really look forward to working with all of you in the future um, and hopefully being the reason why some of you learn how to crochet and trust me, I know this can seem a little bit boring in the beginning because you're just doing the same stitch back and forth all over again, but the sky is the limit. I still work on patterns to this day where um, the stitches are ones, yes, that I already know, but there's all kinds of different techniques and people are still coming up with new things that have never been done before. And um, if you come to enjoy crochet as much as I do, you'll see what I'm talking about in time. So again, bear with me. I know some of you already know how to do this, but for the very, very, very beginners out there, this is incredibly important. I'm going to stop talking now because I'll go on all day. I apologize for the rant. Thank you guys again so much for everything and for your support. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have fun. Bye-bye.